You know, it's very odd how things seem to happen when you least expect them. I mean, here I am, sitting on a table, writing in a journal that I had never seen before in a house that I had never seen up until this previous night. And what a night it's been. I figured writing down my thoughts of everything that's gone on in the last few days would tend to, would seem to bring a case of sanity to the events of everything that I've experienced. Everything that I've seen and everything that I think I've seen. I honestly don't know. Hopefully, this journal and me looking back at it will help me sort out and hopefully give some sanity back to me when things start calming down a little. I've never really had a journal before, so I suppose introductions may be in order. My name is Cranston the Rook. I'm also known as Cranston the Bastard. If anyone were to explain my history to you, they would tell you that I was born into a mercenary gang and bounty hunter group in the port town of Diabel. Far away from here in the Isle of Cortos. Far away from religious extremism and inquisitions and fortress prisons. But if anyone were to say that, they would only be saying what I want them to know, because my past is quite a bit more complicated than that. Born to very uh, situationally unfortunate parents and very situationally unfortunate times, I had to find a way to survive throughout my entire life hiding who I really was. But I may write more on that later. Needless to say, my history is that of a fighter, of a killer, of a smuggler, and of someone who has learned to talk my way out of, tr out of sticky situations more often than not, but also of a listener, someone who tries his best to seem like the aloof, light-hearted one, yet somehow tries to Find as much information as possible before taking action that needs to be done. Which brings me to why I'm here. Unfortunately, running afoul of some very important people uh, around my home, I had to f take a job very far away in this land. I don't even remember what the hell it's called. It starts with a T. I know that much. I made filling in later. <sighs> it was a stupid job. A job that I shouldn't have taken, but I did anyway. I'm not a thief. I'm a killer, a smuggler, a hitman, if need be, a bounty hunter. But I'm not a thief. And I took a thief's job, and I paid for it. I paid for it by having to deal with these backwards religious zealots and the ridiculous uh, legal system, which found me within a very short amount of time with the sentence of trying to, of, of living a life of hard labor, digging salt out of a mine, apparently. But not before. Spending a good amount of time here in this area of, of this continent known as Bandaskar. Or maybe it was just the prison that was called that. Either way, Bandaskar was not treating me very well, and uh, was even worse when I saw my what could only be graciously called cellmates. Some grungy old man, bitter from life, who was a member of this religion named C Abner, I think. I think so, Abner. And some backwoods country bumpkin fool who decided to take up the art of necromancy and soul moving around. I don't even know any, any of that stuff. His name is Crom. 
And then, of course, there's my favorite person, uh, out and outright socialist or whatever you want to call it, a member of the proletariat or what have you. Some I have a feeling we'll be hearing a, quite a bit about the about the oppressed masses and all of that from him. His name is Ragnar. I thought I would be, I was going to simply spend my time here and hopefully find a way to escape at some point in the next three days during my stay here, but come to find the old luck of old Cranston seems to be keeping up with its incredible peaks and valleys. Because you see, one day, our gracious host, Thomas Blackerly, the sergeant, Decided to come and pay us a visit, saying that I myself had a visitor. I didn't know who, no one knew me in this land, but he said it was my sister. And that gave me a quite a combination of feelings, considering I have no family to speak of, officially, and even less from my true lineage at least those that want to acknowledge my existence. But when I walk into the room with her, a beautiful blonde-haired woman with alluring green eyes and dressed incredibly seductively with tears running down her face, I'm always a sucker for women who cry. and Well, women who are beautiful, let's, let's be honest. But when she started talking to me about a benefactor and a chance to escape. Well, needless to say, I was... I was very interested because it was either trust to this beautiful woman with her hypnotizing green eyes or, well, spend the rest of my life in a salt mine. And, <laughs> even if I have to make a deal with the devil... I'd rather do that. I'd rather do that than mine and salt my entire life. Anyway, she cried a little bit more crocodile tears into this very beautiful lace veil made out of gossamer silk or some such. She told me that it would be helpful, that there were tools in it. Upon closer look, my experience with magical devices made me realize. This wasn't just a cloth. This was actually enchanted with some incredibly powerful enchantments. Inside it were weapons, tools, magical devices, all manner of things to help us escape. Nothing too overt. We couldn't wage a uh, four-man war against the entire prison, even though the prison was oddly understaffed. And even with this, I couldn't get out alive alone. I would need the help of the four of the three other people in my cell. And considering she made it a point to make sure that I would get the others out of the cell, well, I figured I might as well do that. Upon coming back to the cell, I was met with the smiling faces of my cellmates. The look of despair and resignation on their faces is something that I don't think I'll be forgetting anytime soon. But when I was relocked into my chains and whispered to the old man Abner next to me saying how I found a means of escape but they needed to follow my lead uh the look of disbelief was it skepticism I don't know I don't really care because when I handed Abner the thieves tools he the look of skepticism promptly disappeared as he Quickly and skillfully for a man of the cloth, uh, unlocked his, his chains and proceeded to unlock mine. It was unfortunate that the eagle 
like ears of the of the gods was able to hear us because as soon as Ragnar was unlocked, they began trying to get in. A melee, uh, a melee uh, co commenced, and we tried our best to keep to keep them at bay as Abna finished unlocking Krom. And as soon as that happened, I decided to fall back and see what else was on this veil. Thankfully, a magical device was hidden in the veil as well. Uh, some kind of a portable hole or window that I was able to slap onto the wall and create a means of escape. But as Krom and, and Ragnar were keeping the people at bay, I was waiting for the right opportunity f for the door to open so as many people as possible would come in and give us as much time as we could to make our escape. And when the time came, I jumped through the window that was created by the magical device, and I was followed by Abner, Ragnar, and Krom. Krom had an interesting way of doing things. He was able to summon some kind of a green glowing creature that was able to do minor spells and incantations. It proved to be incredibly useful to keeping the gods at bay. Thank God for small miracles, if you are willing to allow the expression. Once we made our way out of the window and down onto the courtroom, we... we found little respite, as there were guard dogs in cages and several doors that we were not sure where it went. So after a brief exploration of the area, we found a way to make our way through the gatehouse and on the other side of the gates, locking them from the opposite end, at least doing our best. After a quick deliberation of where we should go and how we should proceed. We went across the long stone bridge that led away from the fortress prison and onwards to freedom. But unfortunately, we had one more hurdle, a guard house with a dog and two guards. Thankfully, I was able to get on the good side of the dog and on the amiable side of the gods. While my compatriots escaped, I was able to convince them long enough that I was a traitor of sorts, willing to share wine and song and, and stories for a night if they would only give me a moment while I go and fetch it. They never saw me again. Like so many others in my life, uh, another group of people that I had to lie to, another group of people that I had to swindle. But that's the life that I lead. Making my way, making our way rather, through the whore, through the moors and the swamps of the surrounding areas, we thankfully didn't come across any problematic or nasty creature. And instead, making our way to a quaint little cabin that the beautiful Theodora told us about. And it was there. There was a light on, just the way she said there was, on the second floor. Needless to say, we very quickly went in and tried to find a way to dry all raggedy clothes. And in that room was Theodora. She explained to us how she was quite impressed. She thought that it was going to take us three days to, <clears throat> excuse me, to get out of that prison. And, well, we did so in about a half an hour. Although, extenuating circumstances notwithstanding, it's 
is impressive even by my standards. But, keeping up appearances, I simply replied of how it's important to make sure you give the best when you get the best. And I always make sure to give the best. She proceeded to explain to us how there are certain things in the prison that we may have missed. How, if we plan right, we can make our way back and maybe find them. How this is more of a test than anything else to see if our mysterious benefactor will actually want to invest in us. Now, for one, we'll not have a problem with that. I have always done what I had to do for to get paid. And if that's what this benefactor wants, then that's what this benefactor is going to get. The lovely Theodora said she wants a variety of results. She wants to see what we can do. Well then, we'll see what we can do. And we'll see what's in that prison when we go back. But first, I need to get some rest. I think that's good for a first entry in this journal. I guess goodbyes are, cap are common with journal entries, so I will go ahead and say until I write again. Goodbye.